Six years in, 120 music videos later, countless hours of shooting and way too much time editing. Today, I'm boiling down everything I've learned in just six minutes. Whether you're just starting out directing or if you just want a fresh perspective, this one's for you. When I first started, I was a bit limited on the equipment I could use for a shoot. This was my first camera, a Canon 700D and a little handheld video light. But since then, things have changed a lot and it comes down to a couple factors. First of all, I didn't let it get in the way of my creative goals. It all came down to the intention. It's the man behind the tools, not the tools themselves. It's not about needing the fanciest camera or equipment. It's about maximizing the resources that you do have available. Back in the day, I was a little bit envious of people who had better equipment than me. This thing barely does 1080p. But realizing that my third ever music video that was shot with this thing got semi-viral meant that it was a bit of a wake-up call that I could make this a career. I could make this work off having a Christmas present and a hundred dollar light. Sure, my earlier projects might have been a little rough around the edges at times, but being able to learn the basics off just this little thing has been able to afford me the knowledge that compounds into all of this. If you're just starting out, sure, having equipment and all is nice, but it's not about that. It's about turning this little thing, your first camera, your first light, into your first paying job, using the resources you can to maximize your potential. As you start to get into it, you realize that pre-production is where the real magic is. Early on, I used to skip a lot of the planning and just try to wing it. Especially with the run and gun style shoots, it's easy to forget that everything you're shooting should have a motivation behind it. Pre-production is where everything gets laid out, from the mood board to the shot list to the locations. Trust me, every minute that you spend here in the planning stage will save you 10 minutes on set. Think of pre-production as a safety net. If everything goes sideways, or even if you don't end up looking at the pre-production document while you're shooting, at least you have something to fall back on. It's better to have some ideas written down that outline the general direction and theme of the video, rather than just making it up as you go along. People congregate around a strong creative leader, so all this time you're putting in the prep stage, you'll see how much of a game changer it is. You'll be more confident, you'll be more efficient, and you'll see the difference in the final result. And if you're looking to get those larger scale music videos under your belt, the only way to win those jobs is by showing your commitment to the pre-production stages with a treatment. Directing is all about communicating. So the pre-production stage is the first time we get to showcase our communication skills by outlining our idea in a way that everyone can understand. So don't skip out on it. Here's something that I don't tell you. Your job isn't just about the visuals. A huge part of it is getting an understanding of the artist and being a people person. Sometimes I'd get lost by focusing too much on my own ideas that I forget how much value needs to be placed on the people within the project. The best music videos, the best directors, those experiences and relationships should be collaborative. These people, these artists, they aren't just chess pieces you can play with. They're complex and creative individuals themselves, and you need to encourage that on set. I've learned to sit down with artists, get in their headspace, build that trust. That's why I've spent the last year here building out my studio, creating a safe space for artist collaboration. You can't create something meaningful if you're not on the same page. Listen to them, bring your ideas, but stay flexible. That balance is everything. Finding your own style and adapting to trends is pretty hard. I've tried a ton of different trends over the years. Some of them worked, some not so much. Finding your own style takes time and it was with experimenting that helped me figure out what felt comfortable for me. Trends come and go, so my advice, try different things, but don't chase trends. It's better to try to find out what feels real for you because that's what makes your work stand out. As for me and my style of shooting, well, I feel like my work often revolves around performance-based videos because I love bringing what is essentially a live show of the artist's performance to the screen where anyone around the world can watch. The viewer can get front row seats to the performance and this style of shooting has helped artists grow while also bringing me my own satisfaction. It's that authenticity, that style of shooting, which has brought me more clients than a trend ever could have. Here's the truth, things will go wrong. Whether it's losing footage or props breaking on set or some of the crew not even showing up at all. It happens to the best of us. And the key thing here is adaptability. Nothing ever goes 100% according to plan. And that's okay. I used to get super stressed out, super anxious on set when things wouldn't go according to plan. But now I realize it's just another opportunity to get creative, to use your problem solving abilities to come out on the other side of that hill. If you stay calm and just adapt, you can get through just about anything. 
If I fell down in a heap every single time that something didn't go according to plan or we went off schedule, I'd be out of a job. So pick yourself up, shake off the dust and keep moving forward because it's your job, it's your responsibility to make things work no matter the circumstances. As a director, don't let a tight budget limit your creativity. Some of the best ideas come from working around constraints and a limited budget forces you to get creative with your locations, your effects or your lighting. Instead of focusing on what you can't afford, think about what you can with the resources that you have available, whether that's using natural lighting or repurposing everyday spaces or just focusing on a narrative that doesn't rely on flashy visuals. Often it's the creative problem solving that makes for a stronger video and it can help connect with your audience. Coming up with ideas is the easy part, but having the means to execute them is a different story because no one likes the guy that over promises and under delivers. So know your limitations and use that to your advantage. It is being able to do the $100 projects that has secured me the $10,000 projects. You don't know what doors will open if you close a window or two. So thanks for coming along on this six minute journey with me. If you're an aspiring director or maybe just a fan of music videos, drop a comment down below with what you want to see next, or maybe even give some of your own advice to some upcoming directors in the comments below. Don't forget to like the video, it helps a lot, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see what the next six years has in store. Until then, I'll catch you on the next one.